Hi, thanks for inviting me over. Welcome to New Crochet Podcast, episode 106. That's exciting, right? It's always exciting. <laughs> I have so much to share with you today. I'm so excited. Tons of works in progress, tons of progressive, tons of how I was designing the new flower for the Bloomscape Cal 2023. And I'm also going to unpack one of these. We're gonna call it Heap of the Week. I'm gonna go pick one of those cubbies and take all the things out and share it with you. Before we get started, I want to thank the winner from episode 105. So congratulations to Tracy Perdue. So glad it's you. Hi. Send me an email, Krista at secretyarnery.com, and I will send you a copy of my latest pattern, which you're going to love. Tutorial comes out tomorrow. You're going to love it. Send me an email, and if you want to win a free pattern, I'll tell you how to do it at the end of this video. So what is in the yarnery today? <laughs> this, this gorgeous little beauty, this is a circle blanket, but it is made into a Christmas tree skirt, but I love it too much, so it just sits on the back of my chair. And this is a daisy square blanket. We are doing it in purple, but I'll be showing you that in a little bit. That is a yoga ball cover, same as this one here. That is a written pattern on my website and a tutorial on the channel, links to that down below. That is my team wrap, my team spirit wrap. That one is awesome, I love it. And what else can you see? Oh, this is the Dirty Granny baby blanket, can be made any size. Also, written pattern on my website and a tutorial on the channel. Oh yeah, and the, this little beauty and that little beauty, those are my string of pearls plants. There is, again, written pattern on the website and tutorial on the channel. Is that all? So we're gonna start with a whip. <laughs> We're gonna start with a work in progress that ended up in a finished object, but boy, was it a rabbit hole. A rabbit hole of fails. So let me sh show you how all that started. So I wanted to do a tutorial for this cute little flower right here. And when I started doing the tutorial, I'm like, nope, that's wrong. Nope, that's wrong too. And I'm like, oh. So I ended up stopping, <laughs> stopping that one, and redesigning it completely, I'd like to say. This is the flower that I wanted to do. It is a Gerbera, or a Gerbera, depending on how you pronounce it in whatever country you're in. But I love it. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it better. See, I love it. I love the little center. I love the little loopy loop around the center. I love the kind of almost single row of, of petals. I just think it's so cute. I even love the colors. I mean, I love everything about that. I thought it's so cute. And I thought doing this flower would be better than doing this flower because this one, if you remember from that podcast I shared with you, I made it too small, so I had to do an extra row. So I went back to redesigning the wheel, literally. So, so I started with this little center, and that's cute, but all these little petals, that little, it's supposed to be a little ruffle thing. It's supposed to go up like that, do you know what I mean? Like, into the center, not out flat like a uh, pancake. So, start again. I'm like, okay, this one got a little farther, two rows on that one, two rows of petals, but then I'm like, that is just so huge for the center, isn't it? That's like big already. And again, they're laying down flat. That does not look like the flower. So, fail. I mean, really nice yarn, feels soft and great, but mm -mm. So then I did it again. <laughs> I'm like, what about that? And I'm like, I love it. That looks, that looks great. Like, it looks great. It is not the flower I'm trying to make. There is nothing about that flower with this starting center point. This is like, it'll be great for like a, it's almost like a, what do you call it? A, a, I wanna say coronation, but it's not. Is it coronation? I have the queen on my mind, so what do you do? You know what I mean. And I'm like, that's a good starting point for like a totally different flower, so skip that. Then I'm like, what if we just did it, you know, like that? I'm like, no. If the center is too big. Well, actually, actually, I don't know if I, I don't know what's wrong with it. Maybe something's wrong with it. Maybe that's all right, actually. Maybe this one's pretty good. What do you think? Good starting point? I'll put it upright, there we go. <laughs> that one, I could, I, we can put a pin in this one. This one's not so bad. I'm like, I think I have it figured out a little better. 
none of the tails are sewn in, so that's, of course, that's a thing. But they're not finished, so they're just like prototypes. So then I got this one done. And that's kind of cute. I mean, we're getting closer, right, to that little flower. I mean, it's pretty cute. But I don't think it's very right still. There's still something wrong with it. Like the center's too big or I don't know what. I mean, looking back, it's not terrible, but it's not what I want. Then I'm like, okay, this one just has too many rows in the beginning. That center thing is just too big for the flower I want to make. So I'm like, what about that way? I mean, that's getting close, right? This looks like the ones in my garden, right? That looks similar to this one. So I'm, I like it, but it's still not right. Well, it's not bad looking back at it, but I think I'm like, I don't know. Then try, try, try again. I'm like, what if, let me unfold it a bit. It's been in the bottom of my whip basket for a while there, a few days. What about this one? That's pretty cute. That is getting close to what I want. And the center's a nice size, the flowers are a nice size, or the, the petals are a nice size. I think it's really, really cute. But no spots left on the back to continue, to make it into like a square or leaves or anything like that. There's no more stitches back there. So I'm like, that sucks <laughs> a lot because I think I finally, it finally is a pretty good representation of it but there's, you can't continue, you can't stitch into it. So I'm like, that sucks. I'm like, what if I tried another one, but this one, I went around those posts. I did like fr front post single crochets or something around those petals, but it made that center part look real messy. See in there, yuck, that's not good. That's like bad. Then I did another one. See, that's kind of cute, right? And I did the little single crochets to continue, but into that round in the center, right into there. I did all those little front posts in there. So that doesn't, that kind of matches, doesn't look bad. And we can keep going, right? I'm like, that's cute. And I think we're getting close to the flower, like how, how I want the flower to look because I want the flowers to look like a flower. So it's a bit more fiddly. And then I'm like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. So I've written out the pattern. I have it all ready to film. And that's the flower. I'm like, that's gorgeous, isn't it? It's really cute. It's like nice and square. There's more le like more greens, so you can kind of see it see the leaves by the edge of the flower. Like, it's really, really cute. So I went to sleep, I'm like, I'll film it tomorrow. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, it's too complicated. It's gorgeous and it's perfect, but it can't be the very first flower that you see because, or the flower that you do for the cow, because anybody who's like a bit of a beginner or just starting out is gonna be like, I have to do a front post? Like you already have to do front loop, then you have to do back loop, then you have to do front post? That's like a lot of new, 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 new. And I don't want people thinking I can't do the cowl because there's like three different techniques that aren't like normal in like learning to do the flower. So I'm like, I had it all ready to go. And I'm like, you can't have that for the first one. Well, I asked Mir, Mir's like, no. Hmm? He says like, you know, when you're playing Minecraft, I was like, of course I do. I don't. <laughs> He's like, you learn how to do redstone, but you don't build the whole thing in the day, you build a door. And I'm like, you're right. You're, you don't build a palace, you start with something small. So this is like a palace, and we're gonna get to it. That's a gorgeous flower, and we're gonna do it. But we're not gonna do it first. Like I wanted to do this one, and I have this one pretty much figured out also. So I'm like, what if we just did this one, but we'll do something else in the middle so people don't have to use eyelash if they don't have eyelash or, you know, if they don't wanna use it we'll do something that can just be regular worsted weight acrylic. Is it bright again in here? <laughs> the sun is coming in hot, finally, I'm not complaining. Uh, so I'm like, okay, we'll start this one. So I did one and I'm like, oh, it'll be so pretty in like these grapey colors. And I think it is really pretty, it's great. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that. 
that's gonna be really cute. So I get all that figured out, get the pattern sorted out. Well, this wasn't even my first one, by the way. So I got this one done, but I'm like, it looks like, it looks like a mum. <laughs> is it a mum? Is that what they call it? Mums or something? It looks like a mum. So I'm like, that's not totally what I wanted. And I think it's because the center thing here is just too small. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, let's do it like that. Like that is a gorgeous flower right there. Then I'm like, this is wrong. That's just too much. If you look at the pictures of these dahlias, there's not like a big difference in color from the center to the petals. So I'm like, that's also a fail. Well, not a fail. I'll keep it for something. Do you know what I mean? It'll be like part of something great, but not what I'm gonna teach you how to do. So then, you're gonna love it, by the way. Hmm? Just the little starting in the dark color, all the colors, all the petals in the same color. Isn't that everything? It's like a cake. I love it. So this one, this is, this is like, hmm? Oh, I could bobby pin those ones, isn't it? Oh, I could do them to match my clothing. Where's all my pins gone? They really should be here. They have to be here, one second. Like literally, they have to be like here. Yep, they are. Got a bobby pin. Got a bobby pin. So, and I'm not doing my tails, so that's just a design feature. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just gonna poke that through. That'll work. So, bobby pin on the back. I'm just gonna slide it onto my very fancy hairdo. How cute is that? I mean, cuter if you, sew, if, you, if you sewed in the ends, right? Adorable. Okay, so there's my new look. I need one right here. <laughs> it's a little far back, but isn't that so sweet? Anyway, there's another idea for you. I love those. That cutie, that one I'm happy with. Uh, I still have to write the pattern, but I have filmed it. It is ready to go. And also, ba -ba -ba. So this will be the first real flower for the Bloomscape Cal 2021. We already did the petal popping, but that is kind of just a granny square that is a flower. It's not an actual flower into a granny square. So that'll be like an extra one, a bonus flower. Or if any of them are too hard or you don't want to do like one of the flowers, you can always use the petal popping. But there, there is this plus 11 more flowers coming. So this is the tutorial to make the one row and then you just keep going following that other tutorial for making it into a block. Cute, right? 100% cute all the time. All cute all the time. I love it. It's so exciting. So I do have to make, I think I'm going to make two flowers for me for each I'm gonna make it like a twin size, like something to go on that sofa over there. So I'm gonna make two flowers. So I'm gonna make one more of that. So cute. But, so this is my finished object. Yay, <laughs> we got to it. That's my finished object. Hmm. So tutorial coming out tomorrow, written pattern on my website, secretyarnu.com, so you can follow along. And all my written patterns are just in plain English. Like you don't have to read a pattern. You know abbreviations, nothing crazy. I literally just tell you on a piece of paper what to do. Now, before I jump into my whips, my works in progress, I wanna take a quick sec to thank our family members. Your support means I don't have to take sponsorship deals or promote products that I don't totally believe in. I can be totally open and honest about all of my shopping experiences. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> Remember that one? Oh my goodness. Poor Jill. Poor Jill. <laughs> and better yet, I could make more videos. So a big thanks to Caroline, Carrie, Kathy, Sindra, Claire, Donna, Friendly Crochet Creations, Jacqueline, Carrie, Carrie the Yarny Elephant, Kim, Chris, Crystal, Leslie, Lori, Lynn, Mama Hodge Crochet and Crafts, Marie, Narell, and Tracy. So thank you so much. And also, if you want to share something with everybody, what you're working on, your works in progress, or a finished object, I was going through our WhatsApp. We have a WhatsApp group for family members. I was going through and I was like, oh, that I want to show that, I want to show this. And then I'm like, I should ask first. <laughs> 
So I'm asking, and whatever you want to share for, on the next podcast, just send it to me on my private chat on WhatsApp. Okay, now on with the whips. The daisy blanket over there, that is one of my very first blankets. I love it. I love the colors. I think those colors are like so nice together. But I also, before I moved, this was my project I was working on, is a daisy square blanket, but in like purples and lilacs and a lovely like, is that like a pistachio green? There, can you see how cool that is? I love it. So made a whole bunch of squares and I made a whole bunch of bigger squares. So these are the big ones. I have to finish uh, this side here and down this side. So I have to finish this one square. And then I have most of them joined up. So the four daisies joined up into a square like this. And then you make a bigger square that matches. So they are the same size. Now to judge the size, that's the tricky part because you have to do the size without the white on the edge, right? So that is the trick about that. I'll be doing a tutorial on this one and showing you how uh, to like how many rows to do and everything. If you are working on your own daisy blanket like that one, this is ready to go, ready to film. So this is ready to film. It's on the filming pile. Now another project I'm working on, I know there's so much today, right? Another project I'm working on, I love it. Like I think it turned out so good. It's not done, but I mean this piece is done. I wanted to show it to you before I finish it so you can see like my trick of the trade. Right? I'm supposed to ask you to hit the thumbs up. <laughs> I was supposed to say, hit the thumbs up or hit the like, like, like this video, da, da, da. And I don't like saying it, so I just made a pillow. So then I'm still, when you see the pillow, you're going to be like, oh, right, she wants us to hit the thumbs up. I totally do. It totally helps. So hit the thumbs up when you see my fancy pillow. Now, what I want to show you is how I change colors. I kind of cheat. Well, I don't know if it's cheating or not. But that's how I do it at the back. I just finish the last stitch of the color with the new color yarn, and then I drag it over and start with it again. I know you can crochet over it, like hold it in your work in the stitch. So that is going to fit on this little pillow here that I had laying around, literally laying around. So that'll be like super, super cute. I want to go put that somewhere. adorable. So working on that, then for the back of it, I'm just going to do a granny square. Just a granny square in a similar yarn. I ran out of that yarn. I only had one ball of ice yarns left. Don't know what I used it for, but it's gone now. So I used, this is softly baby for the back. So I'm just going to do a granny square, the same width as that uh, piece is. And um, stitch it together pretty much. So I wanted to show you the inside of that and I also want to share with you how I did it. Like how I came up with the pattern or the stitch, like the stitch count, changing color, all that. Let me get it out. Ba -ba, it is a chart. Who doesn't love a chart? Well, charts are good, but it's also handy to have it's also great to have the written pattern that tells you how many stitches to do of each color per row. So written pattern and chart, that's a win-win. Easy, 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 easy to do. The, the most difficult part is like cutting the paper and gluing it together, which is not hard, obviously. That's the only time consuming part. That is so easy to do. And the trick to it is going to stitchboard.com. Let me pop on the PC and show you. So here we are at stitchboard.com right there and you want to start over here at register you want to that's where you get all of the good free options so go ahead and register they've never bugged me or sent me spam emails or anything like that and if you've already registered log in that is where we start it gives us all the good bits for making patterns and then we are going to go right here to patterns and on this one here create a pattern that's what we want to do. This is so awesome. 
So now we're going to start here at choose a file. So I'm going to pick this photo here. And our stitch category is crochet. And we're just doing standard. That means single crochet. But you can pick Tunisian or whatever else you're working on. So you can pick whichever color palette you like. I just picked the basic one, automatic closest color, or you can pick your own colors. If you have a certain number of colors, you can select them yourself. Right here, you can just pick which colors you're gonna be using, but it's pretty good at picking colors, but that helps also. Uh, entire palette, you can limit the number of colors. I'm only gonna do two, there is only two, but you can pick that. And here you can do the, how many stitches across you're going to start with anywhere from 150 to 10 or whatever you'd like to do. So the biggest is 150. And this is the good part right here. So you can pick your paper size. For me, I'm A4, but you're probably letter size or whatever uh, works in your country. And pattern and PDF. Yeah, we like that. We want both colors and symbols for our chart. We want a grid every 10 stitches and graph only nope we want graph and word chart uh, show PDF on the screen that's fine or you can download it or email it to yourself and you can give it a title so we can say yeah family pillow right there great you can put in your company name and whatever else all this is going to appear on the PDF so you can actually say, I designed this. How cool is that? I don't really bother. You can put your copyright notice and all that. This is free, by the way. Can you imagine it? Here you can do all these things I haven't really done myself, but you could look into that if it's interesting to you. And let's see it. See my pattern. Dun, dun, dun. So fun, right? Boom. There it is. You want to check that there's enough space in between all of your letters. Two stitches is good. Right here, we might want to put in another another stitch, but it'll probably still just be fine. And there is our chart. So you can see how it, how it works. There's the other half of our chart. So there's 70 rows by 80 stitches across. That's the grid to show you how to like paste it together. And here is the what to do row by row. So 21 rows of just orange and then it tells you exactly how many orange and then white and then orange to do for all your letters. And then it gets detailed when you're doing all of the letters. And what my other tip is just putting a bobby pin or like a hair pin along the edge of your pattern and just sliding it down row by row as you complete the rows. And then also on your, on your uh, work, put a stitch marker in every 10 rows or wherever these lines are on your on your chart and that'll also help you keep track of where you are. So that's how I did that cute little thumbs up, right? That like button. I'm loving it. So I have a whole bunch more planned and that's what I get to do just for fun. Oh, let me get a cup of tea. delicious so good now one more whip that's a lot of whips right okay one more do you remember last week I showed you this beauty hmm? all those great colors with that lovely um, gray the gray color like the same colors from my polka dot blanket love those colors and what I wanted to do are you ready hmm? can you see it what do you think about that? Hmm? So the whole thing's gray except for the little bits, like the little single crochet row. This is the same type of pattern that we are doing for the Bloomscape Cal 2023. This is just changing colors every row. 
but I do carry up that gray. I have a little, a little cheat for carrying it up and I don't mind the cheat. Can you see where I cheated? I just don't want to, maybe I should be turning my work. I'm not turning my work either, but now what I'm also thinking I might do, where did I put that? Way over there. Instead of doing a square, I might do like a little rectangle to start. You know, something like that, like a two, like two blocks to start. So it'll be like a little bit of a rectangle and not a square. Then I'm like, maybe it should be white. White would make those colors look awesome. And so would even a cream, but I think white would look great. Black would look great too, right? What do you think about it, the color combination? Would you go with the gray? Would you stay square? Would you go rectangle? Or would you do it in white? Or would you do it in black? Or would you do it at all? Maybe you wouldn't even do it. I did so in my ends. It's cute, but I don't know about it. Oh, what do you think? I think it's cute. But now that I'm holding it up, I can see it's already like twisting so harshly because I'm not turning my work. So now I'm like, yuck. So I do, you do have to turn your work. That sucks. That's a thing. Every other row of double crochet, I think we have to do the opposite direction. Can you see how it's twisting like that? Yeah. So that is another little whip. It's cute. It's one of those things that I think you have to like work on it and then sleep on it. Be like, that's done. Not thinking about it. <laughs> clean the mind and start fresh. We're gonna run out of time. I gotta change my battery. Now it's time for heap of the week. <laughs> I just wanted to say heap of the week. So what I really mean is stack, but there's no, nothing great that rhymes with stack. But heap of the week rhymes, and that's kind of fun to say. So I'm gonna go over once a week and empty out one of these cupboards or one of these little cubbies and bring it over and share it with you. So let me go grab one. Do you want news of the week? <laughs> news of the week, carrying a bunch of stuff down the stairs, missed the last step. Like I thought I was done and I, was and I turned, but there was one more step. So I totally sprained my ankle. That's the long and short of it. Yeah, yeah, that happened. Anyway, this chair rocks. <laughs> It's so good. I replaced the wheels on it with like these roller kind of roller blade kind of wheels. I'll link them in the description box down below. They're from Amazon. My old office chair, the wheels were like really bad on them. So I replaced them with these roller blade ones from Amazon. Best thing ever. And now I'm like, what? Having a sprained ankle is totally fine. It's actually like even faster to get around the house. Well, I can't go downstairs, but it's really fast to get around upstairs. <laughs> Okay, heap of the week. Oh my gosh, it's so sunny. Let me show you our heap of the week. We have the purples in the house. This is heap of the week. It's a good one, right? So let me show you all of these. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Oh, starting with the good old, good old guzzling. The guzzling granny baby blanket. You remember that one. That's just a couple weeks old, this tutorial. So this is a written pattern and tutorial. Now I'm going to fold them up before I get carried away because I won't fold them up. And then I'll come to do the live and then I'll come in here to do work and it's going to be a huge mess and I won't like it. So I'm going to fold as I go. That's one. Oh, this is a cutie. This is the stitch sampler cowl. So this is all the different stitches that we learned and it's just in a spiral around and around and around. So you don't have to join or anything. You just practice your stitches until your one ball of yarn is done. So that is the stitch sampler cowl. I'd put it on, but I'm hot, hot, hotly. Oh, what's this? Oh, this was going to be, this is actually really pretty. I could do that again. This is the sober granny in a spiral. I was gonna do like an infinity scarf. Oh, it's such nice yarn too. But I haven't finished it or something, I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm doing with it, but that is actually really cute. I think I stopped because it was curling up so much, but it is actually really nice. 
So that is the Sobra Granny in a Spiral Infinity Scarf. Unfinished, kind of. Oh, this is so nice. This is my mile a minute baby blanket with Lorena worsted. So it's 50% cotton, 50% acrylic, and a four weight into this cute baby blanket with, um, I'm showing you the wrong way, with this cute border. Isn't that adorable? Because I think the thing with like these uh, My Limited Minute blankets is like putting the border all around it, it's kind of always awkward. So this pattern comes with a nice border already finished. Well, you have to finish it, but it's all part of the pattern. So that is Mile a Minute Baby Blanket. Pattern on my website, tutorial on my channel, right? <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> What's this one? Ooh. Ooh. This Coronation Baby Blanket. That's gorgeous. That is the Coronation Baby Blanket. So it's a two row repeat. Isn't that so pretty? There is a pattern on my website, tutorial on my channel, but isn't that such a pretty stitch? Is my disco ball glistening? I think so. So that's a super cute one. <laughs> We're having a day with the lights, aren't we? Okay, this beauty is, well, it's not a beauty. This was officially my first crochet project as an adult. This was my adult first crochet project. So it was gonna be a blanket for my sofa set. I made it in a three weight yarn with a four millimeter hook. Of course you do, right? It is, I can go back. That big, can you see that? So anyway, it ended up being eight feet wide. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> but I bought a book from the uh, bookstore here and I just did, I just practiced different stitches as I went through. Like, I'll try this, I'll try that. And then I'm like, I think I'm finished. I think I don't wanna work on it anymore. It was just too wide. So I kind of had it draped over my sofa for a while. And then my sofa faded. So, so my kids, we, I used to, we call it the purple sofa. We're like, oh, the purple sofa set. But my kids are like, we don't have a purple sofa set. It was, it was gray since my kids were born. So <laughs> I'm like, well, it used to be purple. <laughs> It was, it's not purple anymore. No, and I got it recovered when we moved to this house. So now it looks like that. Oops, that was me. Ooh, okay, last but not least, I wish I could stand up for this one. Who knows what it is? Name that stitch. Doo, doo, doo. Number one, name that border. Isn't that everything? Da, da, da. It's like dancing cats, it's fox trot. Da, 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 da. Right? That's a Charleston down there. So cute, right? So just imagine me wearing it. <laughs> so it is, a, it is a big wrap. It's not that big. I guess I can always go back and show you back here. There we go. So it's big like that, but the, the gorgeous part is, of course, this shaky, shaky border. And the trick to the border is like a different yarn. So I used cotton and silk and bamboo to give it that nice hang. If you do acrylic, it's not heavy enough to like pull down, it kind of just goes wavy. But with a, with a natural fiber, look what you get. Isn't that just like, um, like it's just too cute. So this is Global Shawl with Fox Trot Border. Oh, I finally had purple shirts. I just got a purple shirt. I'm going to wear it next week. Now that it's getting to be hot out, <laughs> I finally have something to match my global shawl with Fox Truck Border. And anyway, I'll link that down below also, because this one, that's a win. That's a solid win right there. So that is Heap of the Week. So this is Heap of the Week. That's a pretty good heap, right? Okay, Heap is going back. 
Uh oh, crashing. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> So question of the week. This is your chance to win my latest free pattern. I'll be drawing a random winner from the comments next week. So what you have to do, subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> I know a lot of you haven't, so just go ahead and hit that button under this video right now. Thank you. Yeah, you gotta do that. And then just answer the question in the comments down below. So question of the week is, what would you do with this? Would you do it as a square or a rectangle? first part of the question you and would you do it in the gray or would you do it with white or would you do it with black would you do it square would you do it rectangle would you do it at all maybe you wouldn't even do it so you tell me your opinion in the comments down below and thanks so much for inviting me over we'll see you in this video and stay hooked that one right that one that one oh and like <laughs>